Hi, so I did the translation and implementation of a current uh, overcurrent relay model. Um, so first we're gonna go through the motivation, the problem statement, the methodology, the background, then the different modules that have to be developed in order to create this uh, system, how this was tied into MATLAB, uh, the different types of relays that you can implement with this model, uh, then the result discrepancy between the existing model and the one that was created, uh, uh, modelical advantages, and then uh, future work and the references that we've Can you do it in 10 minutes? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, uh, as we know, the relay is um, it's a power system protection uh, device that is um, that produces a trip uh, signal that will ena uh, enable a breaker to break connection when, the, when in this case the current is too high. Uh, the original model was made um, the same way but uh, in simul. Now the goal of this project is to develop the relay using Modelica because now this will be a stepping stone in order to be able to make it in state machines. Now uh, we can also improve the model performance by creating it again in another uh, language and uh, well the methodology is just make an exact copy of this model. Uh, and this was made uh, doing a bottom-up approach. So uh, we go through the smallest subsystem, and then we create it. Uh, we need generalized cases, see if it, uh, if it performs the same way as the old one, and then we start building up until we have the full system. Um, so this is the original uh, simulating project, as we can see, uh, uh, model. This is the relay itself, but as you can see, uh, the whole power system that is uh, using it is a three-phase uh, voltage source that goes into a bus, into a transmission line, into a breaker, which this trip signal would go into it, and then the fault that happens at two seconds. Um, and then from the, all the outputs would be the trip signal, the fault pickup, operation time, in order for you to see what kind of relay it is. Uh, within the, the, so now we're looking inside of the square. Um, this one, uh, the first thing we have is we would take uh, we would take the three phases and only take one of the phases in order to analyze it. Um, and then we would um, discretize it by using a zero order folder. Uh, we filter in when we downsampling in order to uh, take away the anti-aliasing effect. And then uh, we uh, use a filter in order to get uh, the signals fundamental. Uh, we convert it to RMS and then we compare it to our fault pickup uh, current that is previously set. Uh, in order to eventually uh, get out of the relay the full pickup time, the trip signal, the operation time, and then the ratio between input and output, uh, the, of input and pickup current. Uh, the modules that were developed uh, that were not there in, in Modelica were the structure time of fault, the timer, the calculation of operation time, and then this filter. Um, in Modelica it looks very much the same, uh, but these were the ones that were. So the first part is the is this filter, this one, uh, which there had to be two little modules that had to be implemented. Uh, all of the um, first it was the discrete mean value, which is in, inside the the extracting of the fundamental module, uh, which tells you the mean value of the signal. Then much like a Fourier uh, analysis, you. Uh, input it with sines and cosines in order to finally get the magnitude on the phase. In this case, we don't really care about the phase. We're just looking at the magnitude of the curve. Um, the timer was some, something very simple. Everything was made with the Modelica standard library element. Um, and this one just starts counting once a once trip time happened uh, and calculates the operating time of the, of the relay. And then the calculation time of the uh, operating time of the relay was uh, a bit more tricky because this module goes after this equation, which uh, takes into account the type of relay that will be based on C, alpha, and the uh, TMS. Uh, I had a problem because whenever the input current, there was a point where it would be one, and in this case, uh, our pickup current setting was set to one. Therefore, uh, there was going to be a division by zero. So, um, most like we learned in class, you had to use um, an exception where the max was implemented on the bottom, and then you had to you had a tolerance which is EPS. Um, this is kind of tricky because, um, as you can see in a bit, there is three relay types that you can implement this, and each relay type has its own tripping time. Uh, 
and each one had to get the tolerance, a different tolerance. So as to be able to figure out each tolerance in order for the tripping time to be correct. Um, but other than that, if you were not to implement this and you just put the equation on below, there was a point where the where the simulation would fail because it would be um, dividing by zero. Um, starting time of the kernel was also a very simple switching um, a module that only uh, extracted it, it switched as soon as the pickup current uh, would as soon as the input current was bigger than the pickup current, it would work. Um, so then, before, up until this point, everything that had been tested with a normal sign uh, input that would then would become really big. Um, at time two, which has been whatever we had said the fault was. Uh, so in order to get the actual fault that was being moduled through that uh, power system, um, I, ca I used the cmount uh, function in MATLAB, or in Simulink, in order to put this into a matrix into the workspace. And then after a couple of problems, we are actually making it talk to MATLAB, where uh, I had to use this uh, three commands, which are the ones that we used in class in order to uh, make it work, and then to have to put it into version four um, of the .mat file because that's the only one uh, the Mola wants to read. Uh, I was able to put this into a time series that ends up outputting uh, the same signal as we had in MATLAB. Therefore, now we can see whether the relay is really working the way that it's intended compared to like the other one. Uh, so, as we had said earlier, for this model, the time multiplier setting is set to five, and the different types of relays that we could have um, modeled or implemented in this, uh, depends on the alpha, the C, um, and of course, these have the very different tripping values as we will see, uh, even though the fault happens at the same time. Um, and in order to get all of these together, uh, I implemented records in order to make it very easy to switch from one to the other without having to go in. So first is having to propagate the alpha, the time multiplier setting, which really doesn't change, um, and the C value in order for us to just be able to, I, I would literally just change, you can't really see it here, but just change from extremely to very to standard, and then now you can, uh, you can just change it. This is the input uh, current that I did on two slides ago, which is the one that taken from MATLAB, and the, from the structure of the records is very much like uh, we did in class, where um, you just create a record and link on it. So we would go through three result comparisons for standard, very, and extremely inverse uh, relays. These, this side is the one from MATLAB that was uh, done in the paper, and this is the one that, uh, from Modelica. Um, as you can see, all of them are the same. Uh, for example, this is the fault pickup that happens at two. That is, uh, that was something that we already knew, and the fault pickup, I kind of mixed up, but trip current. Top right. Top right, yeah. So you, you can't really see it, but it's also a two one. Uh, but the one that we really care in the end, because it's the one that we actually end up using, uh, that interfaces with other parts, is the trip signal. And in the trip signal, we see that it will become one, meaning that the relay would actually activate. The fault was here, and then the relay would actually happen one and three point seven. Uh, and here it would be the trip signal, and it's at three three point seven two or something like that. Um, this happens the same as far as uh, all of the all of the different um, types of relays. So, for example, uh, in here for the very inverse, we have a three one. The, we go from standard very inverse to extremely inverse, and the trip time, depending on the alpha and the c, starts going closer to whenever the fault actually happened. Um, in this case, it goes to three. Here, it's two point nine. And then lastly, uh, the extremely, which ends up being 2.68, and then here it's also like 2.67. So now we can conclude that the actual uh, trip signals and, and the relay is working the same for the same signal that was generated. Uh, so what I found really useful for, while uh, modeling with Modelica was that um, there was no really availability of records, so having to change from one to another ends up being really uh, painful. <laughs> like you just have to like redo it and do it. Then you're, co you're comparing to what? To Simulink. And then uh, whenever you wanted to see a bunch of different signals within one module or something like that, you end up having like this 
uh, jungle of scopes that you, and then if you forget one, you have to redo it. Um, and then it ends up being very uncomfortable to be able to analyze them. Uh, the parameters were be able to be able to propagate, but I had a really hard time finding them and managing them, which ended up being like, uh, I lost track to a bunch. And then with Modelica, you're able to make an object-oriented and equation-based model, uh, which uh, is more intuitive and, and more powerful. Now, once this was created, the future works for this would be uh, to, to create different existing power systems and test the same uh, really in order to see how it works. Um, create a Python script which will take all of these different uh, scenarios and then run them at the same time and validate the software uh, uh, with hardware and loop simulation. Now we and eventually use an FMU and uh, the Opoly Phaser simulator for real-time simulation. Now eventually this this model will be changed into state machines to where we would be able to create a new way of uh, modeling the same type of um, electric systems and compare them. We can create now a discrete equation mathematical mode and it becomes a more uh, accurate representation of the system in the real world. Um, the state representation would be done with the Modelica state to graph, the model synchronous and simulating state flow libraries. And uh, this would just and this model ends up being just the base case in order to how to the new theoretical state machine relay model would end up being a base model for other types of uh, electrical systems to be modeled in the same way. Um, and in the end, once you have a bunch of these, really test them out to see compared to the other simulations uh, about other models that have been created before. And, and, the, this and, is the, and the equipment. And the equipment that you have in the lab. Okay. Uh -huh.